so a full day's racing today there's another one tomorrow before the parade we started off in chaos in Mali in the far western tip of that country below Mauritania headed into Senegal 260 kilometers of racing special destination Tambacunda Well, we start this evening with, of course, the bikes. We'll be looking at the highlights of yesterday at the end of this program. Mark Comer out there wearing number one, winner last year, and he's had so much good fortune so far, or at least he hasn't had any bad luck. It seems he was saving it all up for now. Well, they say, we've said it before, there are two types of biker on the Dakar. Those who've been down hard and those who are going down hard. And today, it was the turn of Mark Comer. As you can see, he'd already stood his bike up. Bike didn't look too bad. He'd actually ridden off from the area of the impact, but he gradually felt a bit strange, lost consciousness, and down he went. The medics were on the scene quickly. We were not far behind. By this time, he'd actually regained consciousness and was talking to them. Doctor says he doesn't remember anything. Comer says, where are we? You're around at the 50-kilometer mark. Are we still on the track, he says? You don't remember if you fall? No, you Well, it was time to give him some rest and try and stabilize him. He says, you're very confused at the moment, the doctor's telling him. And we're going to take you back to hospital. He says, what about the bike? He said, don't worry about the motorcycle. Uh, we'll take care of that. You're OK. That's the important thing. And race director David Castero saying, I suppose he fell down because uh, we know he's got no memory at the moment of the incident. Looks a bit uh, knocked about. Apart from that, um, he's all right, but he doesn't just he just doesn't know much at the moment. He got lost, um, maybe had a bit of a panic attack, then tried to refine the track and get his way back. That is a pressure stretcher. They inflate it around the body, keeps um, the body from developing an adverse reaction to shock, keeping the pressure on the body. Strange but true. He's all right. Thank goodness. Zero de Space talking uh, after he found out, he said, uh, it's not something you want, really. He, he says, um, first uh, time I received this kind of news at the end of a special stage, and I saw that the TV helicopter was gone, so I knew there was something wrong, and Mark wasn't here, so I'm just happy that it's not serious, he says. Deep breaths for everyone. And I can tell you that uh, Cyril Desbray has been to visit uh, Mark Kerma tonight. Didn't stay long, doesn't want to lose his own focus. Uh, obviously, he doesn't want to start thinking about these sort of things. Kerma's bike, well, airlifted off and headed straight off to Esteve Puyol, who probably would have been the story of the day had it not been for Coma going down. Esteve himself had his own off. His bike needed repairs badly. And this was his lucky moment, would you believe? Because he was able to cannibalize Coma's bike to repair his own. Took him a long time, though. <laughs> well, Esteve himself saying I was riding in the dust, hit a tree, fell in front of the bike. The bike then went over me. Some pain in my back, but apart from that, I'm OK. Unbelievable. Now, once he'd actually sort of got his head together, he managed to have a shower in the local village, just freshen up a bit. Obviously not concussed, unlike Coma, who is OK in hospital this evening, may I tell you. Well, the crowd gathered round to watch Esteve rebuild his bike. Two bikes into one. <laughs> Another Dakar story. Fantastic. Well, he had some help, of course, but he's a pretty handy, handy engineer himself. So it was a melange of Galois and Repsol that he finished up with. So many of the local villages and inhabitants coming along to witness the Dakar and all set with a brand new bike effectively kind of a cut and shut on the Dakar or the orange one and you can see the blood on his helmet there as well he'd had a bit of a hit himself and he was gone what a great story for Esteve Puyol way down the rankings he doesn't care he just wants to finish now and finish like a biker should in the stirrups
What a great day. It was for him. Cyril Despray, well, what could he say? Same thing happened to him last year. In fact, it happened tomorrow, if you see what I mean. Anniversary of his crash out is tomorrow. He'll be hoping to ride it sensibly. Well, he did today. He won the stage, and he's now red-hot favourite for the title. Who'd have said that yesterday? He leads David Castor by 35 minutes. Some great stories out there on course today. Lovely to see Chris Blaise, one of those fantastic. Second today, he's on the podium now, and uh, you'll see an awful lot more of that particular rider in the future. That's an absolutely given. Chris Blaise, second today, third overall. Does his rallying usually between Vegas and Reno settle in very well? Jerry Bettis has done exactly the same. The lightweight Honda 450 CRFX seems to do really well when it's quick. And the 35-year-old today, who won the Endura de 2K, third home. Good for him. Some of the others who shone out today, fourth place, Tom Claston of South Africa. It's taken him two years, or <laughs> two years, 20 years, to save for a double back-to-back -back Dakar entry. Good for him fourth on the stage he's 18th overall there's some class riders out there let me tell you Jan Vinters of Latvia is one of them he had a terrific day as well finishing in fifth place and the guys from the Eastern Bloc are doing brilliantly Slovakian Katrinak is uh, in seventh finished today seventh uh, Vinters the other Vinters in fact the brother of Janis Einar finished 10th and the Slovenian um, Stanovnik finished in 13th place and he's having a great rally he's in 14th position Katrinak in ninth so uh, it just proves you can beat one of the also rounds but still have a great great rally Yanis Vinter's one of those as far as the Brits are concerned today Paul Broom led them in in position 100 ahead of Steve Malone and our friend Mike Hughes down in the 111 So shake yourself off, dust yourself down and start all over again. Cyril Despray is now the leader after winning today ahead of Chris Blaise, who finished only six minutes and seven seconds behind him. Blaise is now perhaps thinking about chasing down David Castor, who's in second place. It's a French 1-2 with Despray at the top. I started 18th today, so it was really dusty and just took my time getting through. I, I made a couple mistakes early and decided just to slow down a little bit. And waited for my best opportunities to make a pass when it was safe and I had a good ride today I enjoyed it I just wish I would have started up a little bit further up this morning but it worked out okay and Thierry Bet is saying in the beginning it was uh, really tortuous uh, among the trees the navigation was not easy yesterday I got lost quite a, a lot today I managed to uh, do better navigation and uh, all in all everything went well and Esteve is saying I hit a, hit a stump lost the control of my bike, broke the oil, radiator, everything just seemed to go upside down. Well, it did. And then when Mark's bike arrived at refueling, I got hold of that, rebuilt it, and I've managed to get to the end. Amazing.